Namaskar. Welcome to the lecture series on food technology. This episode deals with classification of tea, protective compounds and nutrition facts and processing etc. The following topics are highlighted. Introduction, classification of tea, methods of tea production, preservation of tea and the protective compounds and nutrition facts in tea. Coming to the introduction, tea is one of the most popular and lowest cost beverages in the world next only to water. Tea is consumed by a wide range of age groups in all levels of society as well as one of the healthiest. Since tea was first discovered in China, it has travelled the world conquering the thirst of virtually every country on the planet. The discovery of tea occurred in 2737 BC by the Emperor of China. For many years, people drank tea because of its herbal medicinal qualities. During the time of the Western Zhao dynasty, tea was used as a religious offering. Further, to the Han dynasty, 202 BC to 220 AD, tea plants were quite limited and only royalty and the rich drank tea not only for their health but also for the taste. In the period of Tang dynasty, that is between 618 to 907, drinking of tea became more common among lower classes and spread to Japan by Japanese priests studying in China. Similar to the Chinese adoption of tea, tea was first consumed by priests and the rich for its medicinal properties. The emperor of Japan enjoyed tea very much and imported tea seeds from China to be planted in Japan, making tea available to more people. Tea is often associated with Zen Buddhism in Japan because priests drank tea to stay awake and meditate. Soon, the Buddhists developed the Japanese tea ceremony for sharing tea in a sacred spiritual manner. During the 17th century, tea was imported to Britain via the East India Company. In the aristocratic society, tea was used in the parties and soon it became a common way for to drink tea. Due to heavy import of tea by Britain, the taxes were so high that smugglers would get and sell tea illegally for those that could not afford it. In attempts to turn profits during the tea smuggling period, the East India Company began exporting the tea to America. The American tea was also taxed heavily and contributed to the cause of the Boston tea. Finally, tea arrived in India and plantation was started in 1823 when wild tea plants were discovered by the British in the forest of Assam. Now, India is the second largest tea producing country in the world. The world's largest tea plantation is found in the foothill regions of the eastern Himalayas and the Brahmaputra Valley. Classification of tea Tea is traditionally classified based on the degree or period of fermentation that leaves have undergone. The different types of tea are given below. Green tea, yellow and fermented tea, oolong and white tea, black tea, other types. Firstly coming to green tea. The ancient Chinese society, now southern China, first encountered the tea plant and processed it as another medicinal herb for use in Chinese herbology. The technique used for processing the fresh tea leaves was to immediately steam the fresh tea leaves and dry them for preservation, which is likely the most ancient Chinese form of tea leaf processing. This processing method was perfected near the end of the Han dynasty, that is 202 BC to 220 AD, and produced a dry tea that would be classified today as green tea and quite similar to modern Japanese sencha. This type of tea has undergone the least amount of oxidation. The oxidation process is halted by the quick application of heat after tea picking, either with steam, the Japanese method, or by dry cooking in hot pans, which is the traditional Chinese method. The tea is processed within one to two days of harvesting. Next is the yellow and fermented tea. This use of steam in fixation for tea leaf enzymes is an important step in processing tea, 
with the leaves to be quickly cooled down and undergo further processing. This initiates oxidation in the chlorophyll of the leaves through non-enzymatic and non-microbial means which results in a yellowish or greenish yellow color. The less tightly controlled methods of it in the past resulted in the creation of yellow tea when the tea leaves were over steam fixation or were not quickly spread out, doused with water and cooled. Oolong tea. This tea's oxidation is stopped somewhere between the standards for green tea and black tea. The processing typically takes two to three days from withering to drying with a relatively short oxidation period of several hours. The term oolong is used specifically as a name for certain semi-oxidized teas. In Taiwan is the largest producer of oolong, black tea. In this process, the tea leaves are allowed to completely oxidize. Black tea is first withered to induce protein breakdown and reduce water content that is 68 to 77 percent of the original. The oxidation process takes between 45 to 90 minutes for 3 hours and is done at high humidity between 20 to 30 degrees Celsius, transforming much of the leaves into complex tannin. Orthodox processed black teas are further graded according to the post-production leaf quality by the orange peco system while crush, tear, curl that is CTC or cut, tear, curl teas use a different grading system. Orthodox tea leaves are heavily rolled either by hand or mechanically on a cylindrical rolling table or a rotor vane. The rolling table consists of a ridged tabletop moving in an eccentric manner to a large hopper of tea leaves of which the leaves are pressed down onto the tabletop. The process produces a mixture of whole and broken leaves and particles which are then sorted, oxidized and dried. The rot vein consisted of an auger pushing withered tea leaves through a vein cylinder which crushes and evenly cuts the leaves. CTC black teas is a production method developed by William Mack Kircher in 1930 and consists of machines with contra-rotation rotors with surfaces patterning that cut and tear the leaves producing a product popular for use in tea bags. The roto vein to often used to pre-cut withered tea prior to the CTC and to create broken orthodox processed black tea. During the Qing dynasty, both Lapsang Saochong and Gongfu black tea were well recognized in China and noted in records on Yiwu Mountain by the scholar Dong Tiangong. Next, moving on to the methods of tea production. In ancient days, the production of tea was a time being process. Nowadays, the same has been made simple by adopting scientific and technical procedures. Tea production has been divided into two types. First is the orthodox production. This is one type of common tea production. The following five basic steps are being followed in this tea production. Step 1. Plucking. In this process, the leaves are harvested by hand. There are mainly three types of plucking systems. They are scale leaf plucking, fish leaf plucking and mother leaf plucking. It is usually ranging between just the unopened bud to the top three leaves and the bud depending on the tea being created. In order to make hand plucking possible, the tea trees are trimmed into waist high bushes. After completion of plucking, the leaves are arranged for uniformity and any stems, twigs, broken leaves, etc. are removed. Step 2. Withering. The leaves are placed to wilt and wither for many hours to prepare them for further processing. Tea leaves, even fresh tender ones, aren't very flexible. Without withering, they would scatter and crumble when rolled and shaped. During withering, the leaves are gently mess up, rotated and monitored to ensure even exposure to the air. Step 3. Rolling. In this method, many varieties in tea appearance are created and also where the process of developing flavor is started. 
when the tea leaves softened, they are rolled, pressed or twisted to break the cell walls of the leaf, wringing out the juices inside. This exposes enzymes and essential oils in the leaf to oxygen in the air as to create oxidation. Step 4. Oxidation After rolling, the leaves are placed out to rest for many hours, allowing oxidation to take place. Oxidation is the process in which the oxygen in the air interacts with the exposed enzymes in the leaf, turning it a reddish-brown color by changing the chemical composition. This step helps to create many wonderful and complex flavors in tea. The length of this process depends on the type of tea being produced and the ambient conditions at the time. Depending on the kind of tea, from here, the leaves could be rolled again and oxidized further or not. Step 5. Firing The final step in the production process is to fire or heat the leaves rapidly to dry them to below 3% moisture content and stop the oxidation process. A good, even drying with very little residual moisture also makes sure the tea will keep well. CTC production CTC or crush tear curl production is a very different process. All five steps of orthodox processing are performed but much more rapidly and in a limited fashion. CTC was invented specifically for the black tea industry in an effort to save time that is a single batch of tea otherwise can take over a day to produce and the money. The three basic differences between orthodox and CTC teas are first, the appearance of the leaf, orthodox production whether totally handmade or with assistance from rolling machines and such seeks to maintain the reliability of the leaf. The tea leaves are not cut, worn, minced etc. The shapes produced vary tremendously but no matter whether it's green tea, oolong or black Orthodox processing uses the entirety of the leaf itself to create a different range of flavors in the cup. By contrast, CTC teas do not rely on the wholeness of the leaf. The machinery involved. CTC is produced on a machine which takes fresh, whole leaves and macerates them, crushing, tearing and curling them, hence the name. The ground up leaf is rolled into small pellets and oxidized. The tea produced visually be similar to grape nut cereal or large coffee grounds. Because the leaf is totally broken up, every part of the process moves very rapidly. A whole batch can take just two hours. In orthodox processing, while some tea leaves can look very small at the end, the leaves are never deliberately cut or torn apart. They are carefully rolled and handled to produce a certain flavor and the production relies on accurate tea artisans who have been trained for years, in many cases generations, to make that exact tea. The flavor profile As mentioned, CTC was invented specifically for black tea production. These fast infusing teas are ideal for the tea bag industry as well as for use in spicy chai blends and iced tea because of the color. Their flavor is very one-dimensional, bold, powerful and brightly coloring with a strong astringency. Orthodox teas, because the leaf is not treated the same way, do not produce this type of color and body. However, CTC cannot produce the tremendous range of flavor and aroma which orthodox teas are loved for. The CTC method can't be used to make white teas, oolongs, etc. The shredded leaf oxidizes too quickly. There are a few CTC green teas, but this is accomplished by steaming the leaves to prevent oxidation. That's about as elaborate as it gets. Secondly, because orthodox production requires so much time, the tea maker is able to draw out and develop very fine distinction flavors. Everything done to the leaf will alter the flavor of the tea. Preservation of tea. The proper storage of tea is one of the utmost importance as tea which is improperly stored will go stale or rancid much faster 
or can collect impurities that both alter the flavor and aroma and can also harm the body. Therefore, it is very important to learn how to properly store your teas so that they remain as fresh, clean and flavorful as possible. There are five things which teas are vulnerable to that is light, air, heat, odors and moisture. These five things will rapidly make your stored teas go bad. Protective compounds and nutrition fats in tea. Polyphenols including flavonoids are naturally occurring plant chemicals known as phytochemicals that are found in tea and have strong antioxidant properties. Antioxidants are agents that protect cells against damage caused by free radicals and reduce the damage caused by low density lipoprotein that is LDL or bad cholesterol in the blood. Tea contains a particular variety of polyphenols known as catechins. Catechins are considered to have properties that protect or act against cancer that is anti-carcinogenic, against tumors which is anti-tumorogenic and unwanted genetic changes that is anti-mutagenic. Coming to the nutrition facts and the amount per 100 grams. Calorie 1, total fat content 0 gram, saturated fat 0 gram, polyunsaturated fat 0 grams, monounsaturated fat 0 gram, cholesterol 0 gram, sodium 4 milligram, potassium 18 milligram, total carbohydrate 0 0.2 grams, dietary fiber 0 gram, sugar 0 gram, protein 0 0.1 gram, caffeine 11 milligrams. Loose tea. The tea leaves are packaged loosely in a canister, paper bag or other containers such as a tea chest. Some whole teas called gunpowder tea leaves which resist crumbling are sometimes vacuum packed for freshness in aluminized packaging for storage and retail. The loose tea must be individually measured for use allowing for flexibility and flavor control at the expense of convenience. Strainers, tea pressers, filtered teapots and infusion bags prevent loose leaves from floating in the tea and overbrewing. A traditional method uses a three-piece lidded teacup called a gaiwan, the lid of which is tilted to decan the tea into a different cup for consumption. Major contribution of tea in the world. The graph shows the production of tea from 2006 to 2014 by major producing countries. China produced approximately 1.9 million metric tons of tea in 2012, up from about 1.02 billion metric tons in 2006. Caffeine is a central nervous system that is CNS stimulant of the methylxanthin class of psychoactive drugs. It is found in the seeds, nuts or leaves of a number of plants native to South America and East Asia. The most well-known source of caffeine is the seed commonly incorrectly referred to as the bean of coffee plants. Beverages containing caffeine are ingested to relieve or prevent drowsiness and to increase one's energy level. These beverages are very popular in North America. 90% of adults consume caffeine daily. Caffeine is classified by the FDA as GRAS. Toxic doses over 10 grams per day for an adult are much higher than typical dose of under 500 milligrams per day. A cup of coffee contains 80 to 175 milligram of caffeine depending on what bean that is the seed which is used and how it is prepared. Thus, it requires roughly 50 to 100 ordinary cups of coffee to reach a lethal dose. However, pure powdered caffeine, which is available as a dietary supplement, can be lethal in tablespoon sized amounts. There are several known mechanisms of action to explain the effects of caffeine. The most prominent is to reversibly block the action of adenosine on its receptor which blocks the onset of drowsiness induced by adenosine. Caffeine also stimulates certain portions of the autonomic nervous system. Caffeine, INN. Caffeine is used in bronchopulmonary dyslipsia, 
in premature infants for both prevention and treatment. It may improve weight gain during therapy and reduce the incidence of cerebral palsy as well as reduce language and cognitive delay. On the other hand, subtle long-term side effects are possible. Finally, coming to the conclusion. The word tea, normally people think it is a kind of beverage drunk by elderly or perhaps it may be a source of inspiration to those poets as well. It is a helpful drink for our digestion after meals, apart from tastiness of the tea food. It is also used to clear away the grease in meat and get away the fishy smell of the seafood too with its unique fragrance. Tea may reduce some cancer and risk of heart diseases, but the research is not conclusive. The protective agent in tea seems to be a group of polyphenols and known as catechins. White tea, green tea, black tea and oolong tea are all contain catechins. The process in tea manufacture is to minimize the transformation occurring in processing procedure so as to preserve and the positive substances possible while destroying negative substances and producing catechin rich tea. The composition of tea contents such as caffeine, theopronine, theophylin, catechins, essential oils, aldehydes, various vitamins are found to be rare and valuable compounds and makes it a nutritionally valuable product. In developing countries, tea production is helpful for farmers to move out of poverty and transform their operations into viable businesses, reduce the environmental impact and stimulate local economies. Thank you.